And some people come in your life for a lifetime, some come for a season. You got to know which is which. And you're going to always mess up when you mix them uh, seasonal people up with lifetime expectations. You can't, they got people that done got married with people they was only supposed to be with for a season. They done got married to people they only supposed to be with for a season and wonder why they're having so much hell in their life. That was a person that was supposed to come and teach you one thing. You didn't know it, so you just fell in love. And now you wonder why hey, you ain't got no peace, no way you go. No, no. Listen, I put everybody come in my life in the category of a tree. Some people are like leaves on a tree. The wind blow, they over here. They unstable. They blow the other way, they over here. Ain't nothing. Season change, they wither and die, they gone. That's all right. That's some people. Most people in the world are like that. They just there to take from the tree. They ain't there to do nothing but take and give shade every now and then. That's all they can do. But don't get, don't get mad at people like that. That's who they are. They ain't gonna never be nothing. That's what they put on this earth to be, but be what they are, a leaf. Some people are like a branch on that tree. You gotta be careful with them branches too, because they'll fool you. They'll get there and make you think they're a good friend and they're real strong, but the minute you step out there on them, they'll break and leave you high and dry. But if you find you two or three people in your life that's like the roots at the bottom of that tree, you are blessed, because that's them the kind of people that ain't going nowhere. They ain't worried about being seen. Don't nobody have to know that they know you. They ain't got to know what they're doing for you. But if them roots wasn't there, that tree couldn't live. You understand? And, and, and they ain't got a whole, a tree can have a hundred million branches, but only a few roots down at the bottom to make sure it get everything it need. You, I'm telling you something. When you get you some roots, hold on to them, but the rest of them, let it go. Think of it like this. For every peace dealer you allow in your life, you are 20% more likely to live stressed, on edge, to have a crisis. I'm asking you to find happy friends. I'm not saying you have to cut people off, never speak to them again. I am saying you should put up some boundaries. You don't have to make a big announcement. Like I did, just little by little, spend less and less time with that person. If you don't get the wrong people out of your life, you'll never meet the right ones. Especially in your inner circle, the people who are closest to you need to be stable, consistent, happy, godly, responsible people that move you towards your destiny. Like iron sharpens iron, you make each other better. This is the reason many people are stuck. Who do you have in your life? What are you giving your time and energy to? Putting out fires? Trying to keep someone happy? Feeling guilty because you can't meet their demands? That's going to wear you out. It's time to make a change. You can't please everyone. It's about relationships and identifying people and understanding them and categorizing them correctly as it relates to relationships, whether they're relationships in your house or on your job. I, I talk about the difference between confidants, uh, those people who are in your life for you, and uh, they are there for you whether you're up or down. And then I talk about those uh, constituents. They, they appear to be for you, but they're really not for you. They are for what you are for. And as long as you are headed in the right direction and accomplishing a goal, they will ride with you. And you have to learn how to walk with them because you need some constituents. To, everybody's not going to be an intimate friend in your life. And you have to work with people who are in love with your destination, but not necessarily in love with you. As long as you realize that if they see another vehicle going in the same direction, that might get them there quicker they will jump out of your vehicle into that car and go on down the road and you have to learn how to rejoice when they come and rejoice when they go because i am convinced that some people are in your life like scaffolding they are there till the building is erected and when they have accomplished what god sent them to do you remove them out of the way and the building remains and you got to learn how to rejoice when they come and rejoice when they go then I talk about comrades, or the people who are not for you, nor are they for what you are for. They are just against what you are against. And they line up with you to help you fight. And that's wonderful as long as you realize that when the fight is over, the friend is gone. Don't mess up and marry a comrade.
Because then as long as you're fighting to buy a house and fighting to get through college and fighting to raise the kids, they'll be with you. But when the kids are gone and the house is paid for and they got the degree, they leave because they were only attracted to the fight and not to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We got, a, we got another set of friends where they're maybe not that kind of close, but we want them to have a good view of us. It's the intellectual, smart, and, and everybody's doing well. You got that group of friends, and then, and then you got those, those other group of friends that push you. Thuggery? You have those who intellectual and those who you try to impress, or they try to impress you. And they might not even be intellectual, they're just people that you look up to and just, just friends that you just like being around because you like their status, status friends. And then you have those other type of friends, they make you better. They push you. They tell you, watch, hey, you shouldn't do that. Hey, we shouldn't go there. Hey, I don't, think, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't know if God wants us to do. It's the ones that say, hey, listen, how come you haven't been at worship? How come you haven't been praying? Those type of friends that ask you, hey, how's your spiritual life? Listen, if you got people in your environment that don't ask you about how your spiritual life is doing, you're in the wrong crowd. If you, if you have people who never ask you about your soul and you hang around them all the time, you're in trouble. Because if I'm the only one in the group worried and thinking about my soul, then there's going to come a point in a time where I'm not going to have the strength to pull myself up. So he says this, don't intermingle with nations who don't come from me. But it's amazing how certain things that we're connected to, it can implant certain things in our heart and our mind. People that you entertain, people, have you ever talked to a negative person? And they always got something negative to say? They're never positive. How many positive people do you have in your life? When you have a true friend, they know how to love at all times. Even when you're doing well and even when you're not doing well, they know how to love at all times. It says in Proverbs 17 and 17, it says, And a friend loves at all times. A brother is born for what? Adversity. Doesn't mean that the brother come in order to give you problems. But it seems a brother is born in adversity, meaning that when you're going through tough and difficult times, your brother is able to withhold you. Amos said it this way. Amos says two is better than one. If one fall down, the other will lift him up. The Bible also says in Amos, it says, if one is cold, the other one can, they both together can be warm. So we see that God desires us to have friends and have relationship. He even says this, that where two or three are gathered, that he's there in the midst. Amen? So he's there. Amen? Now go over to Proverbs 18 and verse 24. But the reason why a lot of times we don't have any friends is because we really don't show ourselves friendly. We got walls up. We refuse to be kind to people. And church say amen. Got quiet on that one. Amen. And I mean, nobody said nothing. Amen. No, you be, we used to be kind to people. But now we become very harsh very bitter just very, very you know just very distant and we wonder why we don't have any friends how many people right now you can call them and they lift you up every time you talk to them you say you know what i just love talking to you you just you just enjoy it and have you ever talked to somebody and it was lustful it's always lustful it was always about fighting. Like, who you? Are? Somebody, somebody. <laughs> they seem, they seem always angry, and they were on their way to shoot up somebody. Depending on your type of friends. Don't you know we affect one another? We can either by our relationships, we can either purify one another or we can contaminate one another. Here's what God is telling you to do. You need to be the captain of your environment. As a Christian, it is okay to choose who you answer the phone to, who you let in the house, who sits with you at lunch, 
Amen. Who hangs who hangs out with you after work? Who you choose to all of that? You need to be the cat. Notice what he says. Separate the beast. Yes. 